Hi there, today I want to talk a little bit about RGB lighting control when using ASRock motherboards. Uh, ASRock uses a software called Polychrome Sync and to the best of my knowledge, every motherboard they manufacture that supports RGB lighting is going to be using the Polychrome Sync software. So this is a B550 Steel Legend that we're going to be working with today. And if you haven't already, I highly recommend that you uh, break out the user manual for your specific model. And if you haven't purchased one yet and you're just trying to research and see if this is right for you, you can go to their website, find models that you're interested in, and download this PDF uh, version of this. Anyways, this will have a lot of really useful information, you know, as far as to like the locations of those headers, you know, the number of headers that you have, and the type. And the type would be, you know, whether they're going to be 12 volt non addressable headers or 5 volt addressable headers. Um, it should also include any limitations on those port. For example, like the limitation that it points out here is that those ports are uh, three amps total or two meters maximum. And there should be you know, a little bit of information on Polychrome Sync in here. So Polychrome Sync is also supported in the Razer software. It supports the Razer Chroma effects, which are just some special effects in uh, certain games. You can turn on the lighting effects and the settings. And if you've got the right supported controllers, when those actions occur in the game, you'll just get specific predefined events. So that does work with this. It supports this. We'll take a look at that as well. So let's go ahead and get some RGB devices installed in this. And we'll just kind of take a quick uh, in-depth overview look at the Polychrome software and the Razer Chroma as well. We'll take a look at and we'll check it out and see if it's any good. All right. So I've added some devices to this PC. Um, I've left them outside the case just because I think it'll look better when we do the demonstration with Polychrome Sync. Uh, this particular motherboard today has four RGB headers, two of the 5 volt addressable and two of the 12 volt non addressable. It's also got some built in RGB lighting that we can play around with. And uh, ASRock also does support a wide range of components, meaning memory modules, heat sinks, fans, uh, power supplies, um, etc. If you head over to the website, you can see that list of all the supported devices as well as is the supported games and the Razer Chroma effect. Um, it'll list out the game and whatever effect it happens to do. So anyways, head over to the website, check that out. And uh, how I've cabled this up today is I've taken the three fans and I've connected them to a splitter. And that splitter is SATA powered and also has a PWM connector. And so basically that splitter just has a single cable that plugs into that five volt header. So it's not a hub. Most of these are splitters that we're talking about. So basically it takes that signal from that header and just passes them to all three fans. We don't really control the fans individually. They just all get the same element. And, but we'll take a look at that in a minute here. So um, on the 12 volt header down here, I've connected up this 12 volt LED strip. And on the other five volt header up here, I've connected this uh, LED light bar from Jim. I didn't use the other 12 volt connector up here. I do have another 12 volt LED strip, but I don't have the right uh, uh, connection cable with me. So anyways, Let's go ahead and get Polychrome Sync installed and we'll take a look at uh, how it works. All right, so after you get Polychrome Sync installed and run it for the first time, this is going to be the main screen that you get put to. Uh, the main layout of this is across the top. You are going to get the devices that you can configure. Um, in this particular demonstration, I've got just the onboard LED, which is, just includes the motherboard components themselves. Of course, here you get a representation of the four RGB headers, uh, the two addressable and the two 12 volt ones. You get the onboard RGB elements, uh, you know, included in the IO cover and the PCH uh, heat sink. Uh, these two are grayed out because this motherboard does not have RGB lighting in these areas. Uh, that's for the PCB cover and the audio. And you also get a select all channels. And so, and then this mode here is where you're going to change the uh, lighting scheme. We'll go into that in just a second. Uh, this also is connected to Chroma Connect, which is the Razer Synapse software. And so if you click that, you can basically enable and disable that here. And then you can switch over and use the Razer Synapse software, you know, to do the Chroma effects and also get some basic control of the lighting over there. Uh, this component sync over here is where you can, if you select all channels, you can link up these particular uh, devices. And if this device supports whatever mode you're gonna put it into, uh, it will be available. So I don't have any devices with me today to test that, but that is what that is for. Uh, again, if you go to ASRock's website, you can get kind of a list of all of the supported uh, components that will work with that. 
All right, so we've got all channels selected. Let's go ahead and change the modes and take a look at what it can do. Of course, static is just a single color. And over on this side here, you get the color selection wheel. You can you know, change the main colors using this outer wheel here, and then change kind of the intensity of the color here in the, the square. You can also use the slider bars to kind of adjust you know, the, the colors as well. It's just you know, a different way of doing it. So it works pretty well. I can select almost any color that I want. Again, in the video here, the two LED light bars, uh, they really do not come across in the camera very well. And so we've got breathing. And of course we can change the speed of that here using this slider bar across the bottom. You get a strobe effect. And of course on any of these, you can change the colors. There's a green, of course you can change the speed and all that as well. Cycling, there's no colors to change as it's going to sequence through a bunch of different colors for you. You can change the speed of it though. And random is exactly that. Looks like it just changes it to random different colors. Music of course. Let's see if we put some music on. Critics are raving about West Side Story. Steven Spielberg pulls off the impossible. It's a timeless tale for a new generation. So that works pretty good and is intuitive to the, the volume slider on YouTube. All right, so that function works pretty good. I would get wave, which is just a color wave. And again, you can change the speed of that. Or slow it right down. Get a spring effect. And you can see the orientation of the fans will make a difference in that. These fans here are just on a splitter. Uh, there are fan uh, kits you can get out there that will daisy chain those together. And you get a little bit different effect there. So like stack, of course, you can see all the fans are just doing the same thing. They're oriented different. But uh, you know, in a daisy chain system uh, you know, with a different controller, it would uh, come across all of the different elements. Cram, of course, is kind of the same thing. Slow that right down. Go back to stack and you can kind of see how that works. Now, one important thing we didn't cover is you can change on the individual components. Let's go back. And so if we go over here to RGB address one, we can change the number of LEDs. And so we're set to 12. And let's, let's put it into a static mode so that we can see all of them lit. And then if we come back here, if we turn that down, there's zero, of course. One, two, three. And of course, if these were daisy chained, you know, they would all just work their way up across all the fans. So it looks like these fans have 10 LEDs in them each. And so that's where we'll leave it for right now. So this addressable RGB swap uh, just changes how the channels are uh, displayed. So like the only ones I've seen that really benefit from it are these RGB light bars. And uh, it, it will change those a little bit. See if we can demonstrate that here. Well, you can even see it on the fans here as we switch it. So we're kind of a purple color right there is kind of the accurate and that changes it more to a blue. So uh, there's, I really haven't had to set it for anything. Just, you know, take a look at it. If your colors are off a little bit, try hitting that. All right, so uh, RGB channel two, we're gonna have the same thing. I think we've got 24. And as we just go down, you can see the lights go off on those uh, 
LED strips. So I think I'm 24 on that one. Yeah, 24 on the one. I've got a, there's a few less on that other strip there, but you want to just put it to whatever the maximum is. And on the 12 volt, not addressable, you don't get the option to set the number of LEDs because you cannot address them. It just sends the signal down the whole chain. So everything gets the same thing. Uh, same with the built-in, you know, the IO cover and the PCH heat sink. You don't get the ability to set any of that. It's really only the addressable headers. So, all right, so we go back and select all channels and we'll come back to scan. Neon. A water effect. And of course we get rainbow. Up here in the settings, uh, it really just gives you uh, the version number. This is version 2.0.114 and you can start when uh, auto run it when Windows starts. You get some more options if you add these particular devices, these components. Uh, you know, each one of them will have some unique things you might be able to do with it depending on what uh, RGB elements are in each component. So basically it will show up across the top here and if you click that uh, device, it will show you what is compatible or what you can set with it. And that'll just depend on each device. That's why there's, you know, kind of a predetermined list, you know, or a supported list of components you can use over here. And so anyways, kind of a good feature if you have the ability to pick and choose some of those and they fit your needs. You know, it's one more way to get some good RGB out of it. And so anyways, the other thing that this does do is you can control this a little bit in the Razer Synapse software. So if we go ahead and load that up, and from here we can do some of these quick effects. Of course we can change the color. Then we can go into advanced effects and then we can go into the Chroma Studio. We can select the ASRock controller. And from here we get a few extra things that we can do. All right, so in here we get, uh, we can set some static colors. And of course, select breathing. I need to change the speed and all that good stuff. Let's put wave up here. And you can customize most of this stuff in here. I'll do another video on Razor Synapse in the future, but for right now, the important thing to know is, is that you can get some control in here and it does work. The other thing it will do is it supports uh, certain games that uh, have Chroma effects built into them. And the one that I did try was Fortnite. It worked. Uh, it's very limited in what it can actually do. It didn't, that game didn't have a whole lot of effects. Like if you're familiar with that game, going into the storm, you know, turn the lights, you know, something similar to what the storm was. It was basic, but it does work. Uh, you can go to the Razer uh, website and kind of get a list of all the games that that's supported in and what they do. So anyways, it, it worked. That's the important thing to note. All right, well, there you have it. There is a quick overview of the ASRock RGB ecosystem and the Polychrome Sync software that controls it. Overall, I've got a positive impression of it. It works. Um, you know, I was able to sync across all these devices well enough. And if you were fortunate to have some of the supported components, you know, memory modules, heat sinks, fans, AIOs, video cards, things like that, you would definitely get some added value out of it and it would kind of simplify your uh, RGB solution where you could control all of that in one single location. Um, 
I didn't talk about this earlier, but the, you know, some of the motherboards have a UEFI component uh, that you can go into a little menu there and control some of the sequences and uh, configuration of it as well. This particular motherboard does not have that, and I'm not sure exactly why or, you know, but anyways, check your user manual if your motherboard has that. I personally don't think I would ever use that because then you got to drop into the UEFI, whereas I'd rather just use the software if I'm going to do that. So uh, anyways, you know, a better fan kit would look a little bit better. Look for one that does some daisy chain uh, capabilities so that you can get those effects to span across all the devices on that particular uh, chain. This one, they all have the same uh, you know, effect applied to it. So still looks good, but you could, you could improve that as well. Um, I did try this with JackNet RGB. I was not able to get it to detect you know, this ASRock motherboard at all. Signal RGB uh, does detect it. I didn't play around with it a whole lot. I need to do a future video on Signal RGB. I haven't really played with it a whole lot to see what it's capable of doing. But uh, uh, you don't get a whole lot of customization out of Polychrome Sync. So if your goal is to address individual LEDs and do some really highly customized work, this is probably not going to be the best solution for you. You'll want to go with something like Aura Sync. It has the creator. And of course, Corsair does this really well. There's you know, some others as well. But uh, again, overall, my impression is really good. Uh, that's going to do it for today. If you have any questions about ASRock or Polychrome Sync and I can be of any assistance, uh, please feel free to put that in the comments below and I will answer those to the best of my ability. All right. Thanks for watching.